laughter is the pit stop in the rat race of life and that it gives you enough emotional fuel and repairs to get back into the race again. But the initiative and the proficiency by which we allow ourselves to laugh comes from what I call your humor being. And, and notice what I just said a few sentences ago. You really have to allow yourself to laugh. And I will promise you this, and some of you who already are in tune pretty much with their humor being, the more you get in tune with it and the more you use it, the more it becomes a part of who you are and the easier life becomes. As a matter of fact, let me, and I wasn't gonna do this, but I'm going to. Let me explain to you the very first time I realized, and when I coined the phrase, the power of my humor being. Uh, this is a perfect example in the middle of my comedy career where many years ago, where my, my humor being came to the rescue and turned a totally, totally stressful situation into the ultimate success story. Now follow me on this. I was in New York City. That sets it up right there. I had a rental car that kept breaking down. It was 98 degrees. Air conditioning isn't working. The car is stalling out and it's starting again. And it seemed like every New Yorker on the planet was beating their horns and cursing at me. Folks, if you've ever been driving through Manhattan, you know that's not a secure feeling at all. And the car keeps stalling out and it keeps starting. But to make things even worse, I'm already, I'm already 20 minutes late for a very important audition. And I'm feeling this massive snowball of negativity building up. And I'm like, oh, man, what else could possibly happen? Don't ever ask that question. Because if you do, the universe will answer you. And it did. I drive up to the toll booth and I went to pay the guy and I realized I left my wallet at the rental place. I thought I was going to lose it. I don't know what possessed me to do this. I looked at the guy in the booth and I said, hey, I'll have a couple of burgers, two fries, get something for yourself there, Sparky. This guy looks at me with a typical New York attitude and says, hey, you want I should supersize those fries there, tough guy. All of a sudden, I started laughing. He's laughing. But all the cars in back of me, they're not laughing at all. They're beeping the horns. They're cursing. What the hell's going on over there? We got to get going. Come on, let's get moving. That's when my newfound friend in the toll booth kicks the laughter up a couple of notches. And I'm not kidding you. He did this. He stuck his head out of the booth, motions to all of the other cars and says, hey, we ran out of food. Try the next booth. By then, we were high-fiving each other. We became best friends in 30 seconds. Now, here's the coolest thing. He let me go without pain. He looked at me and he said, hey man, I understand you're in a situation here. Don't worry about it. I got your back. This toll is on me. Get out of here and have a great day. And, oh, and by the way, he said, thank you. And I looked at him and said, what are you thanking me for? He goes, now you need to understand. I'm pretty new in this country and this is my only second day on a job. Believe me when I tell you, I really needed to laugh today. And I looked at him and I went, so did I. Folks, here's the point. I drove away from that toll booth in a totally different state of mind. Totally different state of mind. And as a result, I was able to plan instantly. I was able to plan positive thoughts in my head, constructive ways on how I can deal with this very important audition that I had coming up. And guess what? I had a great audition. I kicked a butt and it's a good thing I did. It led to the most important break in my comedy career. That's how I got my very first TV special. 